Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Chapter 3. We're going to save our big intro uh, for a couple of sections. We're just going to go over some real quick stuff in these first two videos. An ionic substance, remember, is made up of a, a metal and a non-metal. And a molecular substance and molecular compounds are just all non-metals. Remember on your periodic table that you have a staircase. Things to this side are your metals and things to the right are your non-metals. So if you have an ionic compound, it's going to be made with metals and non-metals. Super simple example is NaCl. Cut that thing in half. Na is a plus one, it's a metal. Cl is a minus one, it's a non-metal. So when these things dissociate or break down, they break down into their two ions, the metal and the non-metal. And this is the dissociation equation. KMnO4 is another ionic compound. Break it in half. K is your plus one. Mn is your minus one. MnO4, sorry, is your minus one. The dissociation equation is it breaks down into its non-metal and its metal, and those are the ions. It's pretty happy to do that. Molecular compounds do not break down in solution, do not dissociate. They do not form ions. Okay? They're between two non-metals. We'll be doing very little to nothing in this chapter with molecular solutions because we want to study how many ions are forming. So yes, you need to know the definition, but it will be extremely rare in this chapter. A couple of tricky questions is um, organic compounds. Organic compounds that are made with simply C's, H's, and O's um, are all molecular. Okay, They're all non-metals, except for one kind. They're called organic acids, point number four. Organic acids end in COOH. Now you would need to remember this from last year, but if it ends in COOH, it means it's an acid. And that will break apart into its non-metal front and metal back. So it does form ions. So organic acids that end in COOH will form ions. So what? Well, we're going to deal with a few things about conductivity. If you have ions, then you will conduct electricity. The more pluses and the more minuses you have, the more electricity you will conduct. And I'll show you that in class tomorrow. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, super brief intro. Make sure you know what's inside this box. Metal, non-metal is ionic. If you have polyatomic ion, you're still ionic. If you're all non-metals, you're molecular. Organic things are molecular, but if you're an organic acid ending in COOH, you're ionic. That's it. We're going to try that review in class. Hello, everyone. One more little video review of some things that you should have done in Chem 11. And since I know you're Chem 11 teachers, I know you have done this, but let's do a bit of review because it's important. Um, first question, we want to find concentration. Concentration is big M, that's molarity. And you have sodium sulfate. Sodium sulfate is Na2SO4. And to find the concentration of each ion, we need to dissociate this from my last video. So you got to write out arrow and break it down into its two ions, 2Na plus and SO4 minus 2. To calculate the concentrations of the ions, we need to break down 2.5 molar of the original formula. And it's going to break down into a 2 to 1 ratio, so that's going to be 5.0, and a 1 to 1 ratio, so this will be 2.5. So the concentrations of the ions is 5 molar Na+, plus and 2.5 molar Na. We're simply dissociating it according to its ratios. The next type of question is we're going to have to do some things with those numbers. Do some things with molarities and calculate molarities in other ways. So again, what's the concentration? That's big M. We have grams of nickel-2 sulfate in 850 mils of water. Well, big M has the units or the formula, moles over liters. We've got the liters, but we need to get the moles. So we're going to start off with grams. 94.5 grams times 1 mole over the molar mass of nickel-3 sulfate. And I don't know why I picked one, which was so weird. Nickel-3 sulfate is Ni2 bracket SO4 
0.3. The molar mass of that thing all added up is 405.7 okay, grams. Grams are on the bottom because I've got to cancel it off. Now I'm left with moles. That equals 0 0.2329 moles. We want moles per liter, so divided by liters, 0 0.8500 liters will give me a final answer in molarity of 0 0.274 big M. Take my word for it, my calculator is right here, that's what you get. Grams to moles, moles divided by liters. Next little extension is uh, a little opposite of question number one. Here are the concentrations of the ions. Let's go backwards to see if we can find um, concentration of other ions and the concentration of the original thing. So we got to start off by writing out the dissociation. We'll do that a lot this course. Al2 bracket SO43 is going to break down into two Al's. Oops, Al. Plus 3 and 3 SO4 minus 2's. It says the concentration of SO4 is 0.2. So 0 0.200. And we need to figure out the aluminum. So we have to go backwards. There are 3 SO4's to 2 aluminums. And there's 1 Al2SO43. So if I divide this by 3, I am going to get 0 0.0667 molar. And if I double it to go to there, now I'm going to get 0 0.133 molar. You could have simply just multiplied it by 2 and then divided by 3 with mole ratios and stuff, but let's just do it this way. So that was times 2, and that was divided by 3. So we now know the concentrations of everything pretty similar to what we did in in number one. Next, switching things up slightly again. Okay, just trying to twist and turn as we go. We know the concentration of F minus, we need gram. So we're trying to twist and turn question number two. And we are in two liters of water. So we're going to start off with ALF3 and dissociate it. ALF3 breaks down into AL plus three and three F minuses. F minus is 0 0.200 molar. So to get the AL, we've got to divide it by 3, which is 0 0.0667. Now we don't want to leave it in just units of molarity. We want to go into grams. So we're going to start with the molarity, 0 0.0667 big M, which is really moles per liter. So let's write it out as moles per liter, and you'll see how all the units are canceling off. And what we want to do is go to moles and then grams. So to cancel off liters, I'm going to multiply it by 2 liters. Liters are canceled off, and then I'm going to multiply it again by grams. And ALF3 weighs 84.0 grams in one mole. So just to show you how all the units go, liters and liters are gone, moles and moles are gone, and you're left with simply grams, and the answer is 11.2 grams. Okay. Number five. We've done this a few times this course. I don't think this is going to be a huge stretch for you, but this is a dilution question. This is an M1V1, M2V2. And again, some chemistry teachers use C's and V's and N's and V's. It doesn't matter. M1 is your initial molarity. V1 is your initial volume. M2 is your final molarity after mixing. And V2 is your final volumes added together. We have sodium fluoride and calcium nitrate. So we are going to mix those things together and simply find the ions of Ca and F. Okay, And we're going to have to do the M1V1, M2V2 twice. So let's just start with the NaF just because it's listed first in the question. That is going to be 0 0.960 times 3.78 liters. Solving for the new molarity. And when you add those liters together, uh, you're going to get 10.14. That's the total volume. M2 is going to equal 0 
0.5578 molar. Okay, so that is NAF, but we don't want NAF. We just want F. So we're going to dissociate it. NAF will break down into Na and F. Don't know why I'm drawing a Z. F minus. There's a one-to-one -one ratio there. So if NAF is 0.3578, then F is 0.3578 molar. Okay, let's do the same thing for calcium nitrate. C A bracket N O three two. It is 0 0.550 times 6.36 liters. Solving for your new molarity and the volume after mixing would be the same, 10.4. That divided all out gives you a new molarity of 0 decimal 3449 molar. This thing dissociated is CA bracket. NO3 bracket 2 gives me 1 CA plus 2 and 2 NO3 minuses. If the concentration of CA NO3 is 0.3449, there's a 1 to 1 ratio. So this is also 0.3449. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a super quick, brief overview of a couple of the calculations we're going to be doing in this chapter. You will be reviewing this in class and groups tomorrow. Hopefully this was a, a, a good starting point. See you then.